Hi, and welcome to the Let's Do Video podcast. My name is David Maldo, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about blue jeans. Now, this has been a very busy year for blue jeans with the Verizon acquisition. They all of a sudden have all these resources and brand recognition to compete in the marketplace. And with the pandemic, life has changed for everyone in the video industry. They've had an incredible increase in use, and all of this is happening at once. But what I wanted to ask them about is some recent announcements they had on the security side. Security has been, video security has been all over the news, and everyone using BlueJeans or, or thinking about using BlueJeans is probably thinking, well, what's their security story? So I'm happy to have with me here today, Peter Verweyen. Uh, can we start with the, the encryption part of it? Uh, there's a lot of talk about encryption, and I think a lot of people don't really understand what, what is meant by uh, I encryption. So can we, how, how do you support encryption? What does encryption mean to BlueJeans? Sure. So yes, the, I agree. There's, there's been quite a bit of confusion uh, in, in encryption, uh, specifically with the term end-to-end -end encryption or the various levels. BlueJeans, we, you know, we currently uh, support 128-bit AES encryption. Uh, and this is something that we're actually upgrading, like I said, this month in July uh, to 256-bit. Now, uh, really, what this, this is, is it's not a, an official end-to-end -end encryption, and you'll find very, very few people in the market actually have a true end-to-end -end encryption solution with third-party key management and all of the, uh, the, the, the functionality that needs to go with that. So BlueJeans today, uh, we essentially are not claiming to be end-to-end -end encryption. However, we are in no risk of, of having an insecure environment, right? If you, if you implement an end-to-end -end encryption solution, you do uh, take away that server transcoding uh, capability uh, that really provides quite a bit of functionality, like recording uh, PSTN access to meetings and et cetera. So uh, we do have plans to introduce an end-to-end -end encryption uh, solution, uh, and, but uh, at this time, we are using a standard encryption methodology that most folks in the, uh, in the industry uh, use today. Right. And, and I think, um, you know, th that handles the technical aspect of it, but I think most people are more concerned about uh, the human aspect of it. You know, people uh, being bad, behaving badly and, and jumping into meetings and disrupting and, and handing out, uh, um, uh, you know, links that they're not supposed to hand out. So, so some of the new features relate to that. How are we, how are we um, you know, how are we getting rid of our trolls and, and our, our bad behavior people? Yeah, that's a great question, and this is something that uh, we're all uh, rushing to to solve. And, and the good thing is, is Blue Jeans, we've we've had customers that uh, you know that are dealing with the highest levels of government and have been requesting high security features uh, from us for the last six months, and and we're pretty proud to to be actually launching uh, some of these features now. And uh, it, the first feature I mentioned earlier is called uh, restricted meetings. And that's in actually a preview. We're testing it now. And it's going to be generally available uh, in August, late August timeframe. But what it is, is it's basically a guarantee uh, to almost a guarantee that the person you invite to your meeting is the person that's actually attending. Right. And so now our customers can leverage this feature uh, to essentially offer authenticate internal employees, of course, anybody that you would invite to a meeting, you can lock down your meeting and force them to authenticate through SAML to get in. However, the magic of this feature is that we authenticate external participants outside your organization through somewhat of an email verification flow, right? So an attendee, when it's time to join, they essentially click the join link from the calendar and they're met with a prompt that looks like, like this, please verify your account. And so uh, once you do this, you, you go back to your mail and you'll have an invite with a time bound join link. You essentially click that link and uh, off you go, you're into the meeting. And it really just reduces the surface area of risk that somebody may have gotten a hold of your meeting ID uh, or forwarded your invite and whatnot. So uh, this is a really great feature that will help with gaining meeting access or gating meeting access rather. Uh, and, and the great thing is, is we do some of this with, with our events uh, solution as well, right? And being able to really control how people get into wide scale, large events, right? In the same, same manner the, you can invite a single business unit and uh, be sure that folks from other business units can't get into your event.
If people are using now, their actual account and their actual name, they, they tend to behave as opposed to being anonymous. That's, that's true. Absolutely. Now, there's another aspect to this. There's the, the, the once people are in, in your meeting, how do you control their ability to disrupt, right? Uh, so the things that I've listed over here on the right uh, really just enhance that experience for security and control uh, for your in-meeting experience. And Blue Jeans, we've been historically, we believe in being democratic and allowing anyone to share, anyone to speak. It's all sort of an ease of use type thing, but we realize now when we're in a different world, we need to offer the options to lock things down, right? So uh, we, we've had a, a lock meeting feature since the beginning, and uh, we really just put that button right at the top. You know, if you have back-to-back -back meetings, you don't want the next participant to join, you can just ensure that that's not going to happen with one click right there. Uh, with, with screen sharing, right, we've introduced several ways uh, to control how folks can share their screen. And uh, we, we've actually made it so that you can uh, lock down and make it so only moderators can share, right? So, uh, you know, pretty, pretty typical model from the early days of web conferencing. And then there's also the uh, preventing hijacking, screen share, screen share uh, takeover, right? If I'm sharing my screen, right, like right now, uh, you know, in the old days where we were very democratic, anyone can start sharing, like any meeting, you could just take over my screen sharing right now. Uh, but we're gonna offer an option for you on the fly when you're sharing your screen to just specify, hey, I don't want anybody to take over. And then uh, these settings, by the way, all can be defaulted at the enterprise level. Your whole organization can say, hey, we're really worried about people taking over screen share in meetings. I can lock it down by default for my whole enterprise. Right? Nice. Yeah, and then uh, when it comes to a waiting room, you know, today we have a waiting room. You lock your meeting and someone tries to join, you're, you're at a waiting room. And so we're gonna actually enhance those, that, that capability, give moderators visibility into who's waiting. And uh, also let those moderate, or those folks waiting knock. Right, just let, let because we we're really concerned with the uh, the number of meetings that will kind of be disrupted by increased security. So it's trying to keep that balance and really making it so that you don't have a lot of attendees sitting in a waiting room. Oh, I, I love that. I I don't think there's even a word for it yet, but I'm starting to get a little bit of uh, uh, waiting room anxiety. I'm worried that I'm going to leave people sitting in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's it's a real it's a real thing. Definitely. Um, and then uh, last but not least, really, you know, Blue Jeans, we, we allow you to in mass just mute everyone in the meeting. Uh, it's great. A lot of people use it, but we, we just don't take it to the extra step of le uh, disallowing folks to unmute themselves. So we're going to introduce an extra set or preference that you can trigger when muting everyone to say, hey, look, we want to be in dictator mode here. Don't allow anyone to speak. Right. Teacher mode. Teacher mode, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so um, is there anything else uh, 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 in terms of these new security features? We've covered the encryption stuff, we've covered the behavioral stuff. Um, I'm seeing stuff about, uh, um, in, in my, my notes here, about uh, fraud protection, protecting from from people trying to repeatedly bust into into meetings. There, There's uh, repeated, uh, searching for repeated login. Are people being that aggressive? I'm getting scared here. Well, I guess I shouldn't be if you're going to protect me. <laughs> hey, you know, in this day and age, all the meetings, they're, they're happening online, right? And so bad actors know if they want to, uh, if they want to get access to information and what's going on in people's meetings, uh, that they have to get access to people's accounts and their meetings, right? So it's very simple. Now we, we just increase the surface area of risk for anyone to uh, to try to break into your account, or at least their motives are are much higher now. And so, uh, Blue Jeans. Quite a while ago, actually, we implemented something that we call our fraud detection service. You can find it in the admin console. And really, what it does is it it, it blocks meeting ID uh, enumeration. Those folks trying to uh, to find your meeting ID after so many requests will will block the resource, notify people. Uh, that, that it's blocked. Same thing with username and password, uh, you know, brute force attempts. Uh, we really just provide the admin and the user visibility into, hey, your account is, is there's an attempt uh, for an account breach. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great tool and, and our customers get a lot of value out of it, especially in this day and age. Yeah, 
I mean, that makes sense. When when we all started using emails, everyone started brute forcing our emails. And, and with the pandemic, we're all using video, so now they're going to start brute forcing our, our video accounts. So I'm glad that I'm, I didn't even. I'm glad you thought of it before I even thought of it because that's that's the last thing we need, right? Exactly. So I'm being told in the chat, and and this is live video. Part of what happens in live video, we had an audio issue early on. It looks like your audio came in when, um, when you started talking about encryption. But the very beginning, when I first introduced you, asked you to introduce yourself and just give me the the quick overview on the new announcements. I don't think we got that. So can, can I ask you to redo it? Hey, live video. Hey, yeah, no problem. So, uh, just when it when it comes to what we've announced, you know, we've. First, we've we've really built a platform on open standards, right? I just want to reiterate that that you know when we're we're built on uh, standard protocols, TLS, SRTP, uh, you know, SIP, H323, a lot of these interop technologies from our roots really lend itself to being a secure platform because those open standards are are uh, scrutinized by multiple standards bodies, many organizations, uh, you know, test. Uh, these technologies, right? And so uh, that's that's what we've done. We've taken that great foundation and we've really built upon that, right? We've actually built upon that to introduce uh, several features like restricted meetings. Hopefully that came through, uh, that, that overview, uh, as well as just our enhanced waiting room, rolling out uh, AES-256 uh, GCM encryption actually in July. So we're in the middle of rolling it out now. Uh, and yeah, so uh, a lot of great announcements. Great. And, and I can, as someone who's been covering you guys since the very beginning, you've evolved as, as the industry's evolved, but there has been one thing and it's been that, that, that open standards that just making everything work. Uh, the blue jeans, your, your very first, uh, claim to fame was that you were able to connect things that other, other, that nothing else could con connect. Uh, I was back old school, uh, with, with physical devices, trying to get them to call each other. And sometimes they wouldn't talk to each other. The best way was just to call everything to Blue Jeans because Blue Jeans was all about just talking to everything. So the fact that after all these years, all this evolution, uh, that philosophy is still what's working for your customers is is kind of a cool thing. Indeed. Great. So I, I think that we covered everything. If if I was wanting to know what Blue Jeans story is on uh, security and the new announcements, I would feel comfortable now. So. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And if anyone wants to learn more, we can go to bluejeans.com. Is that where we're at now? You That's where we've been. .com. We're still there. Yeah, we're we're Blue Jeans by Verizon. Blue Jeans by Verizon now. That's right. And we should do it. We should do another one just about that because that's a huge, huge story. But glad we took care of security. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, David.